2. Witnessing Manfolk When Serena turned 16, she swam as fast as she could, up to the surface to see the manfolk, that they might be understood. But when her head broke through the surface, what do you think she saw? A vessel floating on the surface as long as a sea monster was tall. She marveled at its colored mass of purple and of gold and the little school of white things that floated around the vessel bold. They shrieked and called discordant songs as they scavenged for a meal. Serena then thought to herself, how can this all be real? She swam a fair bit closer, keeping out of sight. She didn't want to stir up a storm or cause the manfolk fright. And as she did, she heard a voice cutting through the waves. And it was the sound of a man bard, and he was heaping out praise. Prince Silas drew closer to the burning building, as it swayed and almost collapsed. He heard the screams of the little ones trapped inside the black. He pushed through the smoke, the flame and the heat and braved it all despite, knowing that he might die at any moment, yet he didn't lose the fight. He saved five children, all the ones who were trapped there in that house, selflessly braving the fire of Hephaestus and the danger all about. And it is my pleasure to present to you, before you all have fits, the heroic prince of our country, the honorable prince. Silas! The people clapped, and the prince stepped out. Serena was amazed. Hearing stories of the man's bravery made it hard to move her gaze. The people sang a simple song, and Serena joined right in. She wished she hadn't soon after, as the air began to spin. Water spouts, whirlpools, maelstroms, rain, and more. Lightning, rage, thunder roared and the manfolk were shook to the core. They all scrambled fast to steady their ship before they were overcome. But Prince Silas was swept from the deck and Serena's tail went numb. She dove below the ship straight to the prince's floating form and she held them just above the water in the ever increasing storm. Her tail screamed in pain and effort as she pushed for the extra weight but she had to save this one who'd saved lives. No mind the pain that was great. She dragged and dragged with all her might until she reached dry land. Her skin and scales cried out on contact with the still hot sand. She beached herself for a moment and stared down at his face. His eyes began to flutter open and she left without a trace. She swam back down to the sea below, wishing she could stay above. She wondered at the feeling she felt. Could this all be? Hi, I'm Joshua, and I'm resurrecting epic poetry for modern nerds like you. Come join me at joshuadavidling.com or just about anywhere on social media.